this video we'll be taking a brief look into setting up a basic scene within Factory.io and controlling it using ladder logic in OpenPLC via a Modbus TCP IP server link. Factory.io is a 3D factory simulation program that is able to work with most programmable logic controllers. It allows us to recreate different industrial control systems. OpenPLC is an open source programmable logic controller with an easy to use interface. Before creation of our scene and ladder logic scenario, you will need to download and install Factory.io and OpenPLC editor within a Windows machine and OpenPLC runtime on a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus with Raspberry. Upon installing OpenPLC runtime, you will need to log in with the default username and password, which is OpenPLC with no capitals or spaces. Navigate to the hardware section and switch from blank to Raspberry Pi. Do not select the old version of Raspberry Pi as this is not what we'll be using. As a test for connecting Factory.io and OpenPLC, our scene does not need to be complicated. As such, we are going to take the from A to B scene that is pre-built into Factory.io and modify it slightly. To make the scene a little more complex, we are going to add a start and stop button to, crawl, to control the scene alongside the sensor. To do so, you will need to place a column near the current space and add an electric switchboard. You may find it easier to locate these objects by changing the drop down menu from all objects to operators. When attempting to move an object that is already within the scene, you'll need to select it and hold for a few seconds, otherwise it will not always move first time. You'll know once the object is selected as a clenched hand symbol will appear rather than the standard cursor. You may also need to change the direction that some objects are facing. You can change the yaw by pressing Y on your keyboard, and you can also press V to switch from the horizontal movements to vertical movements. Once you have the column and switchboard in place, attach the start and stop buttons to the switchboard. The exact placement of these is not too much of an issue as long as they are fully connected to give them power. Before we can connect our scene to the PLC, we need to set the drivers within the factory IO to enable it as a slave device. To do this, select the drivers option within file and select Modbus TCP IP server. We now need to configure the server to work with our chosen inputs. You will need to set the host IP address if that isn't already filled in for you, and we need to change the port ID from 502 to 503. 502 is the standard Modbus port and this will be used by OpenPSC, so we do need to change it by one. You also need to set the slave ID, which in this instance is set to 1, and ensure you have the digital inputs count set to 4 and digital outputs set to 2. Once that is set, you can leave configuration and return to the previous page, where you will need to drag the remaining inputs to the empty input slots in the middle of the screen. I have switched the places of the two initial inputs, as this works better within our ladder logic later in the video. To finish this scene setup, press start to activate the TCP IP server. Our next step is to use OpenPLC Editor to create our ladder logic program, which will control the scene we created. You'll need to create an empty directory for this and name the program appropriately. Ensure the language that you use is set to LD, as this enables you to visually create the ladder logic. As we have four objects to interact with within our scene, we need to add four variables. Each variable needs to be a Boolean and needs the correct location set. The location is relative to the input numbers and output numbers from our factory IO scene. Where the sensor was location 1 in factory IO, it will be 100.1 in OpenPLC. IX is the prefix for inputs and QX is the prefix for outputs. We can now use these variables to build our ladder, starting with a two-prong rail. We will also need to add contacts for both the start and stop button and a coil for the conveyor. A two-prong rail will also be needed on the right-hand side to connect the ladder rails and a contact for the conveyor. These contacts and the coil make our first rail on the ladder.
For the second rail, we will need to add a falling edge contact for the sensor and a reset coil for the conveyor. The final stage to building our ladder logic program is to connect the variables together. Once the variables are all connected together, you can then test the program to ensure it's connected properly. Upon completion of the testing and you're happy that it works correctly, we need to generate the program into a .sd file. Once you have saved this, navigate to your OpenPLC runtime instance and log into the system. Once logged into your OpenPLC runtime instance, you will need to set Factory IO as a new slave device with an OpenPLC. You can do this under the slave device option. Name the device appropriately before setting it as a Modbus TCP device and setting the slave ID, IP address and port to the settings we use for Factory IO. You'll also need to fill out all the details on the right hand side of the screen, as the numbers shown are suggestions, not actual inputs. Failure to fill out these will create an error when you go to save the device. The majority of these can be filled in as either the default suggestion or zero, except for the discrete inputs, which we have four of, and the coils, which we have two of. Once you have filled in all the sections, save the device and then navigate to the program section. Once within the program section, upload the .st program file that we just created. You will be asked to fill out some basic information on the program before it can compile. Once the program has compiled with an open PLC, return to the dashboard and start the PLC. Navigate back to Factory IO and start the scene. Once we have started the scene, we can test the connection and ensure that the program works together correctly. When I press the start button, the conveyor should be able to start and show the crate moving. Once you then press the stop button, the crate and the conveyor will stop moving. If we start again, it should then continue until the crate reaches the sensor, upon which the conveyor will stop and before it falls off the edge.